Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design Nerd. Today we're going to be building a book press. This is something I've been working on for a few months now and I'm finally happy with the design that I've got. Now I'm going to be making this out of uh, birch plywood. The cuts that I'm making are going to be done on my CNC, but all of the cuts are very simple and they can be done with hand tools. So don't think just because you've seen it being built with a CNC that it's not possible. Uh, if you've got basic DIY skills, you could easily make something like this. So let's get started with the build. As the lead screw nut would be using six planks of plywood, I had to make sure that each hole was identical. So for that, I'm just using a very simple dowel pin to make sure that I've got the registration for each cut the same. I did a quick test cut just to make sure that my tolerances were right for the lead screw nut. I just added a 0.2mm offset onto the size of the lead screw nut and it seems to just be enough to squeeze it in. Once I got that right it was time to cut all of the lead screw nut holes in each plank of plywood and I'm just using a straight bit end mill for this job. You can see here all of the cuts for the lead screw nut and essentially each plank of plywood just be stacked on top of each other and then it will have one on the top and the bottom which will stop the lead screw nut from coming out. I'm just cutting the plank supply wood that will go on the top and bottom now of the lead screw nut. And now I had to cut the support poles for the press. It was a little bit time consuming because my CNC is small so I couldn't do all of the cuts in one job. I had to cut one hole, twist the plank around and then cut it again. To glue it all together, I'm just using some Gorilla wood glue and each one is stacked on top of each other and then the top and bottom ones will go on later. To secure the lead screw nut in place just a little bit better, I'm using some JB Weld on and I'm just applying it to all sides of the lead screw nut and then when I'm pressing it in, hopefully that should be holding everything in place. Now you see for a lot of these book presses, they have usually some sort of decorative plate on it to say where it was made. So I wanted to recreate that and here I'm just cutting a recess for a metal plate that I'm going to be making. And I'm just gluing on this top layer now which will obviously stop the lead screw nut from coming out. So this is the metal plate and here this cut is with a 60 degree end mill. This one didn't actually come out that good with aluminium so I switched to a 90 degree V bit and it cut much better. For most engravings, a 90 degree or 45 degree is usually more than enough. Lastly, I'm just adding a chamfer edge to the inside of the hole here. So I just filed off the tabs and I gave it a sanding with some 600 and then 1200 grit sandpaper and it came out really nice actually. Next was making a flat edge for the lead screw nut because I wanted to drill straight through this lead screw so that then I could put a pin through that and also the handle to hold it in place. I could have done the whole operation on the CNC but I was a little bit wary because I've never machined steel before on it and it's not really that well suited but it actually did a pretty good job. I could only go so deep with this hole and then I did the rest by hand because my end mills are not actually long enough. The handle is just a very simple design. I'm just cutting it out, two sheets of plywood, and then I put a contour cut with a radius end mill just to smooth off the edges.
Next is just drilling a center hole for the pin to go through. I just coat the pin in some wood glue. That should be enough to hold it all in place. The bearing base is a, a pretty simple job. It's just a little bit bigger than the actual bearing. And I'm using a lot of wood glue here because this was going to hold the, the press plate as well. Now I've also got some lag bolts that would go through the bearing base and also into that bottom base that you see there. So it should be more than enough to hold everything in place. I'm using some M10 lag bolts here. They're, they're pretty big and I'm pretty sure they're gonna uh, not move. Lastly was just cutting some holes for the support poles for the actual bottom of the press. And then I'm just cutting some guides that will stop the, the press plate from moving around when I'm, when I'm twisting the press up and down. You can see that they just essentially guide it up and down. The assembly is very simple thanks to these collars and they've got a really high slip load of, of 900 kilograms so it's more than enough for what I'm going to be doing with this press and you can put these at any height along the poles so if you did have a really big job and you wanted to press loads and loads of books stack them all on top of each other you can just move that main housing up and down and you can adjust the height. Lastly, just attaching the lead screw into the bearing and it's all ready. So you can see the finish pressed here. I actually went with an unvarnished look. I did test a bit of plywood with some Osmo oil and I didn't really like how it darkened the plywood. I really did like the contrast between the unvarnished look and the, the cold steel. So you can see here, all you need to do is just put a book or anything in between two bits of wood, place it into the press, and you can see that it's got more than enough clamping pressure to flatten any bit of paper here. So I hope you've enjoyed the build of this book press. Uh, I'm really happy with how it's all come out. Uh, I've even got a scar to prove that I actually made it, which um, is a good thing, I guess. So this press is, is pretty big, as, as you can see, and also it's pretty heavy. Um, if I was gonna design it again, I would maybe drill holes into the inner sheets of plywood just to maybe try and reduce the weight because once you've got it all put together, these parts really do add up and it is quite a lot to lug it around. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to keep it up in the loft and then bring it down whenever I need to do some binding or something like that. I think I'm gonna to have to find a permanent place for it really because it's probably gonna be a bit too heavy to lift up and down the, the stairs into the loft. But thankfully it is adjustable so I can always just untighten the collars, I can lift off the main housing and that takes care of most of the weight. You know, most of the weight is, is this section here. So, you know, this one is pretty big. It can fit up to A2. You can see here, you just about squeeze an A2 sheet in there. That's as big as I wanted it to be. I think if you was going to do any bigger, if you wanted to do like A1, which I can't really see why you would for, for book binding, but you would usually go with kind of like two lead screws to distribute the pressure more evenly across the board. I think this is really kind of like the limit you can get with a single lead screw. If you look at most of the designs of kind of Victorian book presses or the ones that are you know, cast iron, it's usually this kind of size is the maximum size that you see. So this is 
I wanted to build it as big as possible really. Now, if you are trying to cut down on costs, you can easily use a smaller lead screw and a lead screw nut. I used a 40 diameter lead screw, which is absolutely huge. And the lead screw nut as well is incredibly big. If you went with a smaller lead screw and therefore the nut, you could probably get away with a smaller housing as well. Think about that, if you are going smaller, I'd definitely go smaller because then you get a smaller bearing and it all just reduces the weight. So this year I'm gonna be binding some books. I've got a few projects planned. I do wanna make a photo book for the Taipei pictures that I took. If you are new to the channel and you haven't seen those videos, basically I took this beast of a camera. This is a medium format uh, Mami RZ67. Uh, I took it to Taipei and I took pictures on my trip while I was there. I've got a little YouTube uh, series that you can watch up above. And basically I would like to make some sort of photo book or I guess a zine contain those pictures. And I'm going to use maybe the book press because I do have some book cloth that I do want to use. I bought it while I was at university. I binded a few books and I've not used it again. So I do want to try and get through using that if possible. And I'm actually leaving for Miami tomorrow for another trip. So we're going to be doing another Mami R series. I'm going to be taking some film over to the US and I'm going to do some uh, shots over there as well. So stay tuned for another Mami R series. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help me out on the channel. Um, it's always really nice to read all of your comments. And that is it for now. I will catch you later.